So, Kiho, and welcome to Buddhist Mahavira's uh, Facebook page here at Buddhist Mahavira's uh, public page. We are going live uh, this evening um, in our Dhammadana series. And we are continuing where we left off uh, a week ago, uh, where we had our speaker, Bante Nita from Sri Lanka, was <coughs> explaining on the Muni Sutta. Uh, the, but since the Muni Sutta is a very long sutta, uh, we have decided to break it up into three parts. One will be discussing the second part of the Muni Sutta this evening. Uh, let me bring on uh, Bhante Vinita to our studio. Good evening, Bhante. Good evening, Aya. Good evening, everyone. Yeah. Welcome to Buddhist Prayer's Facebook page at the Dhammadana series. Uh, mm. Today, as you know, we are also uh, we'll be following up on part two mm -hmm. of the Muni Sutta. And uh, I don't know if you can hear some background noise. Uh, there's heavy rain in the end. So you might, you might pick up some very thunder and lightning in the very uh, temporarily. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with uh, Bhante Vinita, let me play his profile. Uh, Bhante mm -hmm. Vinita was ordained as a young uh, monk at, age, at a young age in Sri Lanka and he received his higher ordination in 2007. He's the resident bhikkhu of the Tiratana Lombini Garden in Puchong and he's also the principal of Sandhidama School. Bhante is currently in Sri Lanka um, and he had gone back during the COVID pandemic and Bhante has a first class honours, uh, bachelor's of art degree, English degree from the Buddhist and Pali in Sri Lanka. Uh, he's also just completed a master's of education teaching English as a second language from Health University here in Malaysia. Bhante is currently uh, lecturing at the Nagananda Institute of Buddhist Studies in Kenya, Sri Lanka. And with that uh, introduction, I would now like to invite to start this evening's uh, Dhamma sharing on the Munisutta part 2. Bhante will be trying. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters in Dhamma, I'm so happy to meet you again in this sense in order to discuss the facts in Munisutta. First of all, we may pay our great respect to the Triple Gem by reciting Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhas Namo Tass Bhagavato Arehato Samma Sambuddhas Brothers and sisters in Dhamma, it's a great pleasure to learn the Buddha's discourses at all the time. It's a great pleasure to teach his teachings to the others and also it's a great pleasure to educate the people in his teachings in order to see a good human being in this world in order to see moral human beings in this world. Therefore, at all the time, as a monk, I am so happy to share my Dhamma knowledge, what I learned, 
what I teach in the forms of teaching and educating. Muni Sutta is an example for all of us because of the characteristics it brings to the society in order to educate you about the life of a monk. As I mentioned last day, the term Muni is a term in Pali. The same word is used in Sanskrit as well for ascetics, mendicants, monks, or else those who left the household life and lead a life of a religious leader who practices the religious teachings without getting married. Muni Sutta consists of 15 verses We discussed about the five stanzas last week with the introduction to the discourse and also with the meaning of the term Muni. I think our brothers and sisters can clearly remember now who Muni is. How would that define a person called Muni? In the, in the Buddha's discourses, we can see three parts in this Muni Sutta. First one is introduction to the discourse of Muni, the discourse of Muni, or the discourse on the silent sage. In the introductory part, we can see how Buddha has defined the term Muni. And also in this discourse, we can recognize Buddha introduces himself as a great sage, as a great sage. And also, at last, Buddha introduces his ordained disciples, ordained disciples, as a sage or Muni. We may discuss and separate the characteristics into these three types of the groups when we come to the last part or the third part of this course, this discourse. Next time, after explaining the whole discourse, Today in the second part, I expect to teach you the meanings of the other or the next five stanzas, how Buddha revealed the characteristics of a sage or a muni. the characteristics of the sage, the practices of the sage, what 
মনি ও সেজ শুড ডু হাউ দে থিঙ্ক হাউ দে পারফর্ম হাউ দে এভয়েড দ্য ট্রাভেলস অ্যান্ড সোশ্যাল ইস্যুস পার্সোনাল ও ইন্ডিভিজুয়াল ইস্যুস which rest from the external background we can see so in the muni sutta the next five stanzas from 6 to 10 i may discuss today in details to enlighten our brothers and sisters in dhamma because i know i have no money i have no other material things to give you the best gift i have according to the buddha whatever i learn about his discourses about his dis, uh, teachings to share with you to teach you so it's the greatest gift that i can give for you then i think you may utilize what i give to you in your life and practice these things and also you may also consider to be a monk or an ascetic to absorb these qualities into your life and lead a successful happy and peaceful life in this world in order to overcome all the defilements all the difficulties all the problems you have as a human being so let me directly move to the discussion in this discussion i am taking the sixth stands our verse in the discourse for you to understand uh, this verse brings a good idea or an image about the life of a monk or a muni it says anya balan sila vatu papannan samahitan jan ratan satiman sanga pamutan akilan anasavan thanva api dhira muni vedayanti i read it again anya balan sila vatu papannan সমাহিতং for today it would be the first stanza but according to the numbers of the verses in the discourse it is mentioned as the sixth one so what does the buddha express about a life of a monk through this verse anya balam whose power is wisdom wisdom is the power of a muni 
a sage or a mendicant you can use the word you know ascetic panyavalam the wisdom is the power they have in the life of a monk if they have any power that's called wisdom normally you think in your daily life when you associate monks or whoever when you engage in activities at the temple you expect the final decision from the chief reverend or any other monks at the temple maybe you can answer it is because of respect it is because of the uh, venerated situations reverence or what other things you feel you can answer but brothers and sisters in dhamma the hidden meaning is you expect them to be wise more than you so you think the monk is the wise person he has the wisdom to solve all those difficulties maybe you feel in your life this is the correct path to solve this problem you understand the correct way the right way the noble way but sometimes you present it to a monk and question bante whether this is correct that's it, that's to that is to get approval for him sometimes if you don't see beyond your uh, decision beyond your position where you stand regarding something then the monks reveal this should not know or this should not happen in this way but this can be performed in this sense then you accept when they provide evidences this concept this behavior this interaction between the monk and also lay people can be seen in this society because from the time of the buddha from the ancient time in this society early monks who lived in this world early munis early ascetics lay ascetics have established their reputation with evidences their power is wisdom their power is wisdom in leading the world life in leading the spiritual attainment their power is wisdom their power is wisdom because of their power sometimes they are silent whenever they need to be silent they are expressing their direct ideas intelligently when they need or when they understand this is the suitable time for the expressions of the ideas in this sense in their daily life they utilize their wisdom to lead the life therefore the power of the monks is wisdom not only that in leading their spiritual attainment the monks perception their purpose is to attain nibbana very soon they think i should be soon 
I should attain Nibbana sooner than others. Therefore, they are in a hurry to practice all the activities, all the spiritual requirements, such as the perfections of almsgiving and observance of the precepts, and also leading a life of a monk, also part of uh, practices of the things that we need to attain this uh, Nibbana. So, maybe because of wisdom they have decided to become a monk to shorten their sansaric journey. To shorten their sansaric journey. In this sense, what they practice as spiritual practices also, they utilize their brain and they use their wisdom to shorten the sansaric life. Because of that, their power is wisdom. Their power is wisdom. And also, Panya Balam Seela. Then the term Seela. Panya Balam Seela Vattupa Pannan. They are, they are endowed with moral virtue and habit. Not only with wisdom, they are full of moral virtues, virtue and habit. They lead a moral life, virtuous life, with a host of good habits. So that's why you take monks as an example in this world. The image in your life, in your mind about the monks is created that monks are or always morally behaved, they have a moral conduct, they are virtuous, they are uh, they deserve, they deserve the reverences from the other people or the followers because of their moral conduct. So moral conduct or moral virtue, they tame their mouth, they tame their body and also they tame their mind. Having tamed, having controlled, having restricted, there are three ways of performances by the way of the word, by the way of the body, by the way of the mind. They control their behaviors and lead a virtuous life. Because of that, they are full of seal. They are full of seal or virtuous life with good habits. Not only that, they, when they use their wisdom as their power, when they lead a moral and virtuous life with uh, positive behaviors, what they do is they focus on the jhanas or the spiritual attainments, delighting in meditation, in, in uh, delighting in meditation, they focus on the jhanas or the spiritual attainments mindfully how they can achieve, how they can receive, how they can attain the higher spiritual attainments. When they have these three characteristics, when they use wisdom, when they engage in moral 
of virtuous activities with good habits and also when they focus on the spiritual attainments mindfully delighting in meditation to attain nibbana from the mind what happened is from the mind mentally they are getting freedom from the attachment mentally they are getting freedom from the attachment that is called craving we say tanha so when they get freed from the attachment using wisdom when the wisdom becomes their power and also when they lead a moral virtuous or positive conduct with noble habits in the life they focused on the meditation delighting in meditation they pay their attention to the next higher achievements of the spirituality mindfully then their mind is working to clean the mind their purpose is to clean the mind not to make it impure as a result they get freed their mind their mind get freed from the attachment from the craving and also they get the freedom of mental barrenness mental barrenness sometimes your uh, mind is a barren field for craving sexual desire sensual desire hatred hatred maybe makes your mind dry with the feelings of hurting others sexual desire makes your mind dry with the desire to have in lots of sexual satisfactions and also influx from all these defilements when a monk or muni uses wisdom as his own power and when that person leads the life with the moral virtue and habits focusing on the spiritual attainments delighting in meditation mindfully indeed brothers and sisters in the this wise person is known as a sage by wise people the wise people recognize this person as a wise person and also a sage a sage a mendicant or an ascetic the word in the discourse muni should contain these characteristics in the life of a monk they practice these things so that's why the buddha said monks consists of wisdom and moral behaviors with virtuous practices they focus on the spiritual attainment delighting in meditation so their desire their happiness is practice of meditation mindfully then they try to clean their mind to detach mind from attachment and mental barrenness and influx free so these are the characteristics this sixth verse brings 
to you to make you understand about the life of a monk these are characteristics therefore always we have to think when we recognize or understand a life of a monk these are their characteristics maybe you have a practice or practice of question bante there are some monks who do not practice these things i don't see and i also think i don't recognize this monk as a correct monk or true monk some say when they say like that my answer is clear brothers and sisters is in life if they don't use their practice to use power as wisdom wisdom as a power if they don't lead sometimes a moral virtue if they don't meditation do meditation mindfully if they don't want to detach from all those uh, attachments mental barrenness and influx let them practice sometimes they will take sometimes let them improve their intelligence because at once you cannot see all the qualities from a life of a monk at present time because present time is a critical time that brings you to destruction the buddha's order one day will disappear from this in this world why the reason is for disappearance the people get away from the practices of his teachings and intelligence they will be lack of intelligence so from that human beings from that society some people who are rich in merits become monk so because of their early practices in their life they practice their monk life as a monk or muni in this life to go to next spiritual level so don't worry about that so next verses is the seventh verses so we may recite that in this way ekam charantam munimappamantam ninda pasansasu avedamanam sihan sandesu asanta santam ವಾತನ್ವಜಾಲಿಂಪಮಾನೀರಾಮುನಿವೇದಿಗೇನ್ ಚರಂತಪಸಂಸು ಅವೇದಮಸು ವಸಂತ ಸಂತ ವಾತಂಗಜಾಲಿ ಅಸಜ್ಜಮ ಪದ್ಮೇತೇನೇತಾರಮೇತೀರಾ ಮುನಿವೇದ ಬ್ರದರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ 
sisters in Dhamma. So this verse brings the factors to you to reveal the personality of the sage. Personality of the sage. How the sages build their personality in this impolite society. In this impolite society, how they perform the activities to make their personality. Ekan charantam muning appamantam ekan charantam muni appamantam ekan charantam the sages, the monks, the ascetics they wander alone they are wandering alone because they live in solitude they have to wander alone to achieve their spiritual attainments to reach their spiritual goal so they need to wander alone their personality is wandering alone because they are lack of responsibilities to institutions organizations and other societies they wander alone from village to village city to city country to country and also munin appamanta they are heedful they don't be late in practice of spiritual practices ninda pasan sasu avedamana in front of the blames and praise some people blame some people praise them even the buddha also you see the story of the kinchimanavika the other religious people wanted to insult the buddha when he was living because his practices his way of choosing the life all the things are totally different from other religious sages other religious leader leaders because of that they were very angry with him they cultivated hatred towards the buddha they set up lot of troubles for the buddha in order to catch him in a difficulty and to say the buddha is not a real sage the buddha is not a good sage that was their purpose they want to catch him in a trap they wanted to put him into troubles because they felt jealousy of his receiving arms receiving respects his reputation all the things therefore they blame they put blame on him they criticized him they condemned him at the end when they cannot win people when they cannot defeat the buddha in blaming in insulting in saying uh, the unhappy news of about the buddha to the people they couldn't do anything what they did is they used so many strategies to make the buddha's character black one strategy is there was a girl called chincha manavika the other religious people gave money to her 
gave money to her and said, You go as a pregnant lady to, to the temple in front of the audience, in front of the people, you insult the Buddha. You are living in the temple, eating the food from the people happily and successfully, but you don't think of your son in my womb. Why are you putting the girls into troubles in this way, making them pregnant? In this way, you tell to the audience and insult the Buddha. and put him into troubles. What happened is this lady also got the money from the other religious people and came to the Buddha. In the way they said and in front of the Buddha she insulted. When she began to insult it, what happened is brothers and sisters in the king of the gods the Sakha saw this situation, this lady, depending on money, is going to blame the Buddha, having taken the money from the other religious uh, teachers. So this is not fair. So this is an insult for a true sage. He changed his life into a mouse and came to this lady and ate the ties of the fake pregnancy. Then in front of the crowd, what she uses as materials to show that she is a pregnant lady, fallen down to the ground. Not only that, after that, she was defeated by the Divine Being. Then the other religious teachers got upset and they wanted to be free from this problem to say that they did not insult the Buddha. She did, and the same strategy they developed into a, another strategy. They decided to give some money to another person and kill this lady, Chinchamanamika, and put under the uh, flower heap flowers, when the people uh, come to the monastery, they offer flower to the Buddha. The flower, as you throw away like dustbin, the big uh, amount of the flowers were at the, behind the Jetavana monastery. They could hide the dead body of Chincha Manavika having killed her, having covering the flowers, then the, what, uh, then these other religious teachers, what they did is, they sent a message to society, Kinchavanavika is absent, maybe because of the insult done by her, Buddha may, might have killed her, Buddha might have killed her, so we need to find her, what happened to this innocent lady. For such an uh, insult, insulting, for such a small fall done by, uh, by a lady, whether the Buddha is unkind, whether he is so dangerous, whether he is uh, cruel to kill this innocent lady, Maybe he has killed. We need to find and send the people to monastery to get out the dead body. In this way, they, all other religious teachers, all other uh, 
religious followers try to insult, insult the Buddha. Not only that, some monks also from his order try to insult him. They try to insult him. But when the insultings or blames or any other problems come to him, he did not shake his mind. He was unshaking in front of everything. The same characteristic goes to the other venerables or the munis in his order. Even his disciples also were unshaken by blame of the people. Even at present society also people try to criticize and blame the monks. They try to give the character certificate for the monks, munis in the world. But remember brothers and sisters in Dhamma. Buddha did not advise us to criticize anyone or condemn anyone. Buddha advised us to Sabhapa Pasa Akaranam Kusala Supa Sampada to do Sabhapa Pasa Akaranam to avoid all the evil deeds. So blaming is also an evil deed. Kusala Supa Sampada to upgrade our skills in performing meritorious deeds. So if the blame is an evil deed, how we avoid it, how we have to avoid it is not to practice blaming. Then how to upgrade our skills in performing the good things instead of blaming? We are silent without blaming others. And also praise. Some people praise people they appreciate with pure purpose, sometimes with not pure purpose, with the purpose of teaching you, with the purpose of teaching you. Some praise some monks, this Bhante is better than that Bhante, that Bhante is better than this Bhante. The same thing happened when the Buddha lived in this world. Even today also some people, some people so-called educators, some scholars, they try to give their definition for the Buddha and they try to interpret the Buddha and they to show that they are intelligent. Then people praise those people. The same nature goes to the monks also. That is a natural thing in this society. But when the praises are coming to the life of a monk, they are silent, they bear patiently and they don't go after the words of praising or appreciation done by someone. Whether people blame or praise, they don't care. They are unshaken. They are unshaken by blame and praise. Because blame and praise cannot lead a successful life. Lead a life of a monk. So Buddha understood these things in his life and his followers, ordained followers also practice the same. Ninda pasansasu avedamana. Ninda pasansasu avedamana. Buddha and his ordained flowers, all munis. All monks are unshaken before blame or praise. Siham Sadhesu Asantam 
guess buddha provides a example an example for that you know a lion cannot be trembled a lion is a lion untrembles before the sound sounds of the weapon sounds of the drums sounds of the mouth of the people or any other sounds a lion untrembles himself you cannot or any other sounds cannot tremble a lion in front of the sound lion a lion's nature is untrembling in the same way whether the sounds come from blaming or praising monks are unshaken monks are unshaken so that's an example and also like the wind not caught in a net vatam va jhalam asajjamana you know when the wind blows you cannot catch the wind by using a net by using the net you cannot catch the wind in the same manner when the people whether they blame or praise they cannot stop the practices of the monks for the attainment of nibbana you know when buddha was meditating under the great bodhi tree to attain the nibbana the fully enlightenment the mara the evil doer created a very strong wind to blow causing dust to come and come to the buddha and causing trees to fall down with lots of sounds but he was never afraid of that strong wind by the mara in the same manner monks life the practices cannot be prevented in using net or any other strategy when they practice something for the spiritual attainments so remember the wind cannot be caught in a net in the same manner when the people appreciate or blame the monks they cannot stop their journey they are shaken they are wandering alone they are heedful in practice of the virtuous things and also their personality is very great because paduman va thoyena alippamanta paduman va thoyena alippamanta paduma means a term for flower brothers and sisters in dhamma a lotus flower in the pot or in the lake in a tank it is stands unsoiled by the waters a lotus flower is stands unsoiled by the waters even though this society is full of defilements just like the lotus flower buddha and other ordained monks or sages 
they don't have an attachment with the water with the people just like the lotus flower in the water as water cannot make the lotus flower impure the society or the individuals in this world life in world societies who are full of the craving they cannot make in, uh, make the monks impure they cannot make the monks unsoiled they cannot the monks soiled they are unsoiled they just there is a big gap between the life of a monk and between the life of the lay people there is a big gap so the society or the other individuals they cannot make the lives of the monks impure using the craving using the hatred so that's why their life is just like a lotus unsoiled by the water not only that netaram anyesu anya neya so monk or a muni is a leader for others they have the skills of leading to others so they are known as a leader of others not to be led by others they cannot lead others they cannot or the society cannot lead others uh, lead the monks they cannot be led by others they are the leader for others they are the leaders for others so they cannot led by others the lay people cannot led lead the lay people cannot lead for the lead the monks monks or the sages are the leader for lay people and the others because of this personality characteristics of personality a monk thangva pidhira tham that dhira that intelligent muni sage vedyanti known as a sage wise sage in this way now i think you can understand the personality or the characteristics of personality of a man how they live in this society how they depend on the society how they are different from the society and what they can do for their society so this is an important is answer that all the people including the monks should keep in their minds lay people can remain monks are just like this so we cannot lead them they are our leaders monks also should think lay people cannot lead us we are the leaders for them so we should be wise we should show our differences just like the lotus flower unsoiled by the waters and we should be the wind that cannot be caught in a net and also we should not tremble our life in front of the sounds like blame and praises so they should remain they should be patient they should they have to absorb these qualities and lead the life
Then the eight verses, brothers and sisters in Dhamma. So it's also very important. <clears throat> Yo oga hane tam bori ba bori va bhijayati yasmin pare va cha pariyantang vadanti hanvita rakam susamakitin riyam hanva pidira Munivedayanti Again, Yo Ogahane Hambori Vabhijayati Yasmin Pare Vacha Pariyantam Vadanti Hamvitaragam Susamakitin Riyan Hanva Pidira Munivete Anti Brothers and sisters in Dhamma, the monk's life, a Muni's life, is just similar to a bathing post. post. Bathing post. In a bathing place, you know when the people have bathing, when they have showering, all the dusty things, all the dust, they leave there, they clean. They clean. They leave to the place. The place would be very impure. The bathing place, bathing post, post would be very impure, full of dust, full of uh, impure things from the bodies of the human beings. So it's unclean, not clean. All the things, all the dust, they clean and leave there. Then what happened to the bathing place? The bathing place, maybe you think your bathroom, washroom, you have a shower, you get showered and leave all the dust there, you don't clean. In the same manner, when others speak to a monk or muni in extreme terms, extreme terms means, you know the, the worst words. And also the unhappiest words when they insult, when they criticize, when they condemn, they leave, they leave their hatred, jealousy, and other defilements. Just like you leave your dust in the washroom, they leave, they speak, they are hatred or bad things, they are jealousy in extreme terms towards the monks or muni. Just like the bathing place, they are patient. Patient. But you remember, bathing place is always clean. This bathing place the Buddha has taken, that is just bathing place in a river. When you leave there, your dust, what happened is maybe shampoo, 
your dust of uh, clothes and all the things you clean and you leave there but the water comes and clean the place in the same manner just like a bathing place monks mind are very patient they bear the patience they are patient and also just water throw away the all the dust from the place they leave they drop all the dust they don't absorb they don't absorb maybe you are servant or you are self clean the washroom and throw away the dust you don't let the ground of the dust, uh, washroom to absorb the dust you need to see it clean at all the time in the same manner they clean all the dust when people even though people talk in extreme terms they drop they quit they don't care they don't keep in the memory they are free from that so because of the lust or craving or hatred or anything ignorance when people do in that way but the monks don't cultivate the same thing they detach from that they get freedom so monks faculties are well focused they focus on their faculties not to absorb those things because of that brothers and sisters in dhamma monks are all the sage that wise person is called a sage next the ninth stanza is also very important we can recite it in this way <clears throat> yo veti tanto tasaran vaunyo jigochati kam he hi pap ke hi viman samano visaman samanya tanvapi dira nivedanti yo ve again yo ve titanto tasaram vaunyo jigochati kam me hi pap ke hi vimans mano visaman samancha in this verse we can see again a great meaning about the life of monk yo ve titatto sasarangu uchu if there is someone in this world whose mind is steed fast steed fast they are the monks monks mind is steed fast yove titatto tasaram vauchu their mind is so strong their mind is well established only steed fast so when their mind becomes steed fast indeed brothers and sisters in dhamma they go straight as a shuttle they go straight as a shuttle a shuttle does not return 
it goes straight forward in the same manner when the monk's mind is steadfast indeed they go straight as a shuttle because of that jigochati kammehi papakehi they feel disgust about the bad deeds they feel unhappy with bad deeds they reject the bad deeds they don't want to appreciate the bad deeds viman samanto vimasam visaman samanta cha they can they can recognize them the bad deeds well and even and the even the, they can discern the uneven and the even because of their skills in this way they are skillful because of this skills indeed this wise person is known as a sage a great monk the buddha says brothers and sisters so monks or the muni or ascetics should be steadfast and also they should not have u turns they go straight as a shuttle as a shuttle so they feel unhappy with bad deeds they don't want to practice the disgusted bad deeds they feel disgusted with bad deeds they feel unhappy they reject they don't appreciate the bad deeds so because of this they have the ability to discern the uneven and even so consider these skills when these skills are in the life of a monk indeed that monk is a wise monk and also meaningfully he is a sage lastly for today the last stanza for today 10th one also we can discuss about another positive side of a monk's life a muni's life the stanza says like this like this yo sanya tatanto na karoti papam daharo majji mocha muni arosaneyo na soroseti kanchitan vapi dira muni vedyan again yo sanya tatanto na karoti papam daharo majji mocha muni arosaneyo na soroseti kanchi tanva pidira muni vedyan what this stanza bring it's also so important yo sanyo atto na karoti papam brothers and sisters in dhamma if there is someone who is well self restrained does not practice evil deeds remember brothers and sisters in dhamma if there is someone who is well self restrained self controlled and that person does not practice bad things does not practice immoral things does not 
do the evils. So in doing the evil, he is abstained from, he is abstained from doing the evil things. So a monk, if there is someone in that way, that's a monk, that person, that monk, that Muni is well self strained A Muni is well, well self strained A self strained man, self controlled man, fully and does not bad, do bad things, evil things, negative things, immoral things. Daharo cha majjimo cha muni yo atto. Whether the said is, this self is self strain or self control said, whether that person, the said is young or middle aged, young or middle age man whether the whether this self this money this ascetic a self strained man whether their life is young or middle aged life towards every stages of the life that person is neither led by anger or angers or anyone. That person is neither led by anger or angry people. Because of that, they are self-controlled and does not practice, do not practice evil things. A sage is a self-controlled man, well and truly because of that does not practice immoral things, either bad things or negative things. This sage who is self-controlled, self-restrained, towards the stages of young and middle age in their life, even though they are young or middle aged monks, they are neither led by anger, hatred, nor angry people. So you see, they do not follow angry people's instructions and also they do not cultivate the anger. Even though the monk is young or middle aged man, so in this way they are self-controlled. Because of this spiritual quality, brothers and sisters in Dhamma indeed, this wise person is known as a sage or money or monk. Sage, a monk or ascetic, an ascetic or a monk. Now, you can examine the what are the qualities, what are the characteristics, what characteristic make the life of the monk self control what characteristics bring the enlightenment into a life of a monk so if when they are full of these qualities brothers and sisters in dhamma they are truly a sage they are truly sages they are truly monks they are truly ascetics so they don't cultivate anger or they are not led by angry people. 
they don't follow angry people's instructions and also they don't cultivate anger therefore remember they always cultivate loving kindness and they consider the thoughts or ideas or instructions of the loving people of the of the people who are full of loving kindness therefore when someone says angrily when someone expresses something angry to the monks when they take decisions with anger to control the monks they don't follow remember so buddha is not giving such a permission to anyone to control the monks by anger or anything therefore this quality is there they are self controlled do not do bad things because of this quality whether they are young or middle age they cannot be led by anger and angry people as these qualities decorate the life of a monk they are called sages so in this way brothers and sisters in dhamma many many different spiritual qualities pertaining to the personality character spiritual practices and skills and the thinking styles attitudes behaviors of a life of a monk we can understand from this sutra so this is to encourage the monks to think of their life back and what they lack what they have and differentiate and to cultivate what they have more and more and if they don't have anything to restore those qualities in their life that is the purpose of revealing these factors by the buddha and also brothers and sisters in dhamma remember when it comes to your side as lay people this is to motivate you to be a monk or nun a sage and also these qualities are called golden qualities you like golden especially men and women are very happy to get jewelry and new trends of the dress code and new styles maybe high styles they think they are attractive new trend demand and also a great decoration for their life but those things are not appreciated by the buddha what the buddha appreciated you can see there they are poor having avoided you in going away from the track you are motivated to practice this life of a monk and to be full of these golden qualities these are the golden qualities not the jewelries therefore you may consider to lead at least a certain period in your life as a monk then you will enjoy these qualities then you will enjoy what a great freedom you can achieve therefore please consider these things not to examine the monk's life using these things as criteria but to practice these criteria in your life 
for both monks and nuns as well as lay people. Those are the purpose of the Buddha. Because I want to tell these things. When we explain these things, brothers and sisters in Dhamma, some people try to use these criteria to examine the monks and criticize the monks. These are not to criticize and condemn the monks using whether they have these qualities, but to rethink and think and think more and more and motivate you, you to if you are a monk, if you are a nun, if, they, if both you are lack of these qualities, you can rethink, you can look at difference, whether you have or not, then if you have, you can cultivate more and more. If you don't have, you can originate these qualities in your life and cultivate more and more. If you have restore those things and protect. If you are a layman or woman, layman or woman, these are to motivate you to be a monk or nun or sage and lead a successfully full, happy and peaceful life with these golden qualities. People should be full of the qualities. People should not wear the golden jewelries, but they should be full of the golden qualities. We say the golden qualities, but even though we use the term golden, they are more, these qualities are more important than golden. So golden ideas, golden practices, we call positive practices, moral practices, they are more, they are the most important, but not the materials which are made by gold. Therefore, consider these things and try to avoid the difficulties, unhappiness, key, uh, unhappiness, and also unsuccessfulness in your life and try to receive this happiness, this peace, this success in your life, you can practice these things, you can achieve this happiness only through the practice of a life of a monk. You know, even though we have lay arahants, after the attainment of the arahanthood, they can live only for seven days as a lay arahant. If they don't become a monk or nun, they cannot live more than seven days. Those who attain the Nibbana in the Buddha's order, when we count all the 99% arahants are monks. Whether they are monks or nuns, they are ordained people. So, when you attain the Nibbana, so you need to practice and attain a life of a monk or nun. Therefore, consider these things to have a practice, to have a habit. You may consider these things and try to be a sage, try to be a monk or nun in your life to earn the true happiness, true success, true peace. Thank you very much, brothers and sisters in life. Looking forward to, to explain the, the last stanzas in the part three and also conclude this session next time, uh, having gone through the entire discourse. So if you have any questions, I may be so happy to answer you and enlighten you right now. If I know a monk that does not have these qualities, does that mean I should try and distance myself from that monk? If you 
know a monk in that way who is lack of these qualities if you are naturally because of being a worldly person if you get if you are a protagonist person if you get angry normally so better to avoid that person in associating because you should have until you get until you get a self control better you avoid the person in meeting but remember <clears throat> we discussed about certain similes the water is born sorry the lotus flower is born in the society in the water even though the lotus flower is born in the water it doesn't have any connection with water water cannot reach to the lotus flower so there is a gap so in the same manner even though different people there even though different monks there that's their spiritual level you just recognize they have some more to go they have something to something more to hit to achieve and be happy what they have achieved now at least they lead a life of a monk if they do something immoral the aftermath will follow them like the heavy load of the cart when it settle on the bull bull will suffer a lot in the same manner when a monk or someone does not practice the moral things as a monk if they don't lead a monk life just like the heavy load of a cart which settles on the bull the aftermath will follow the person will settle on the person so why do you want to become a part of that in criticizing in blaming in getting angry why you want to get suffering suffering means mentally you are suffering then that suffering is a result of your behavior of getting angry then as a result of that bad practice suffering settles on you so you try to be a lotus flower and also you try to be a lion that does not tremble in front of the sun characters are different the buddha was there buddha was there within his order there were some disciples who misbehave he promulgated vinaya rules and explain the aftermath but after that there is a rule but he does not want to want that people to uh train uh, how to say the he does did not want to uh, put all those people into troubles they can follow if they don't follow they will suffer a lot just he instructed showed the bad side and the bad results if they don't do those things he showed the positive results the following or practices is up to you buddha or his instructions so when you look at someone so called a monk if they don't practice the moral things just think in the way of dhamma in the way of the buddha's way if they don't follow why you are getting angry 
they will suffer. You are not suffering because of someone's fault. So you try to be a lotus flower. You try to be a lion who does not tremble in front of the sounds. So you cannot change sometimes the people just like the wind that cannot be caught by a net. Why are you making so many efforts? So why are you suffering a lot because of someone's behavior? So you try to take that person as an example and to be better than that person in his spiritual quality and but don't say that person is like this I don't try to appreciate once uh, myself or yourself I am better than that but by practice you enjoy that Any thank, uh, thank you, Bhante. I don't see any more questions. Uh, so I think we have taken almost uh, one and a half hours to complete the five stanzas uh, from yeah. six to ten. Uh, so I think uh, we will carry on uh, next week on the 12th, the third part or the final part of the Munisutta. Uh, mm -hmm. So before we end, Bhante, can, we, can you please conduct the Anumodana? Can. <clears throat> By the power of these merits, may our Chief Reverend Dadot K. Sri Dhammaratana Nayak Tere and the respected Mahasangha in Malaysia, may they all be well and happy. May they be free from suffering. May they be able to attain supreme bliss of Nibbana. And also our BMP, Buddhist Mahavihar Management Committee, President, uh, Brother Sirisena, and uh, Brother Leslie, Honorable Secretary, and other all the members and devotees of Buddhist Mahavihara, Sinhalese, Chinese, and Tamil, all the Buddhist devotees, may they be well and happy, may they be free from suffering, may they be able to understand this Dhamma and attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana, and also all the brothers and sisters in Dhamma who listen to this Dhamma talk and discussion around the world may they receive these merits may they understand the buddha's teachings may they understand the who buddha is and may they be able to attain supreme peace of nibbana and also uh, we may move to our departed ones the late chief kesri dhammananda nayaka mahatera and also let Bhante Dr. Punneji uh, and Bhante Dr. Dhammadin and including other Maha, uh, respective Mahasangha in Buddhist Mahavihara as well as in Malaysia and around the world who passed away having dedicated their lifetime to the Buddha Sasana. May they receive these merits, may they be able to free from all kinds of suffering and finally attain the supreme bliss of nibbana and also all the devotees who supported buddhist mahavihara who built the buddhist mahavihara who passed away may they receive these merits and may they be able to attain supreme bliss of nibbana and also many sponsors may their uh, departed ones receive this these merits may they be able to uh, attain supreme bliss of nibbana finally uh, may all the deities receive this nibbana may all the deities be free from all sufferings in the samsaric life may they be well and happy in their heavenly life may they be able to attain supreme bliss of nibbana may they protect this world may they protect the buddhist mahavihara and respective mahasangha all the brothers and sisters in dhamma and also by the power of these merits at least at last but not least may this covid 19 pandemic uh, disappear from the world may the dis may this world be so peaceful happy and comfortable for every beings by the power of these merits. Sadhu, 
sadu sadu akasatta chumatta deva naga mahitika punyam tam anumodita chirandakkan tulok sasanan akasatta chumatta deva naga mahitika punyam tam anumodita chirandakkan tulok sasanan आकाशट्टा च बुम्मट्टा देवाना गमयिद्दिका पुण्यंतंगनु मोदित्वा चिरंद्रकं तुमं परंति अभिवादन सिलिस निचं उत्ता पचाइनो चतारो दम्मा वर्धन्ति आयुवन्नो सुकंबलं आयुरारोग्य संपत्ति सग संपत्ति में वचे अतो निबान संपत्ति इमिनाते समिंजतु थैंक यू बंते थैंक यू फॉर स्पेंडिंग टू एंड हाफ आवर्स विथ अस थैंक यू फॉर द अनुमोदना सो बिफोर वी एंड दिस for this evening's uh, Dhamma sharing, I'd like to inform our viewers uh, for this Sunday, uh, the Buddhist Mahavira, in conjunction with World International Day, uh, would like to dedicate this Sunday to our ladies and uh, to our women, to Buddhist women especially. And uh, Bhante Vinita has managed to find a very uh, uh, learned speaker. Her name is Dr. Iromi Ariratna. She is a senior lecturer in one of the universities in Sri Lanka. And Dr. Iromi will be speaking on Buddhist attitude towards women uh, this Sunday at 8.30 p.m. So I'd like to invite all our listeners, especially our lady listeners, to get your family members together, your moms, your children, you know, uh, to join us this Sunday at 8.30 p.m. to uh, listen to Dr. Iromi uh, on her topic, Buddhist attitude towards women. Uh, so before we end, Bhante, thank you so much for taking time off on behalf of the community. Thank you so much. And... For the monks of the and Buddhist Mahavira. Yes, and also to all our sponsors and to all the listeners this evening, the viewers this evening. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you this Sunday and in in future. And also next Friday, uh, Bante will be finishing the final part of the Muni Sutta, the third part. Uh, do join us then next Friday at 8:30 p.m. With that, have a pleasant evening and salute to all.